you want to build a display like this one for your thing speak project using C sharp stick around and you'll be able to do it there is a link in the description to the channel that I use to get this data from now it's not my channel so consider checking it out if you want otherwise let's get into it all right now this is going to be pretty much just a cut and paste show rather than me doing line by line coding all right, so if it, if you'd feel like writing it out or whatever, just pause the video and you can uh, just write it down as you want. But you'll, for now, you're just going to see me copy and paste. That way we can get this thing done and dusted as fast as possible. All right, first thing you want to do is go up into Project, Manage NuGet Packages. Go Browse live charts WPF click on that click install all right once this is popped up you'll know that it's done its job you can close that off you can close that off now click up here you can make this bit be bigger if you want. Now add a line under here. Copy. Paste in that line. I'm going to change the dimensions to fit the project a bit better that I want. Now, I don't know where these come from, so we'll just get rid of them. Get rid of that. All right, I'm going to add a grid. So I'm just going to copy in a grid and some rows. Bang. So, going to have a title across the top, subheadings, and then a whole heap of gauges. So I'll add the, I'll copy in some borders. Bang. Give it some definition. I'll put in the titles. Copy. Paste. All right, those that don't know, if you put a view box in first and then a text block inside, what will happen is your text will always be the right size for your box. If you just put a text block in there, it, it doesn't work that way. View box and text block, and it'll always get bigger and smaller as you adjust. All right, now I'm going to add in all the gauges. Copy them. Copy. Paste. Bang. There you go. All right, now I'll just quickly show you what the different parts on the thing are. They're your colors, and it's like um, different offsets for the you know the type of color that it starts at and goes to. So you you'll see the shading difference. Uh, zero to full. So zero to full whatever max is. Um, don't worry about binding. I'm going to use binding in a later later video and I'll show you how that can work. For now I'm just going to show you how to update them. Alright, so that's all those. There's eight of these, each called field one through eight. Now let's do the code. All right, first thing you want to do is add some more of these. All right. So that goes in there. Now 
now above the main window need some variables now this is for the messaging and to split the message up right I'm going to add a timer effect for the updating or timer effect you know timer in the thing all right so this from seconds 30 now this is every interval that it's going to run so if you want it to run every five minutes it's what 360 seconds if you want it to run for uh, every one minute it's 60 seconds and so on and so forth all right now I'm going to add the timer tick bang now I'll quickly go through what this does bit here is a URL that what when you go to it it gives you back the last line of data in your project now what this is doing this is this is copied straight from the website basically as well so if you want uh, more information about how this works things speak has a good level of uh, knowledge on there that you can steal and use in your own projects now this run right here change it to your channel ID so if it's if it's set to private this won't work this way you'll have to set it to public but bear in mind that everyone can see your project what this part bit does is uh, creates a web request uh, goes to that URL pulls back the data that it's sent back and uh, saves it into a little string and then uh, we read through that so what I've got here is commented out now but if you uncomment that you'll see your data roll in so you'll be able to go ah that's my string that I'll get back and then you can see it to work out these numbers here so I've got this integer start equals uh, a number in that str data so what it's doing is it's looking for the last index of field one so when it sees field one what it does is it gets that character number and then starts from that character number plus a certain amount of digits and then stops at a certain amount of digits and that becomes the number you're going to put in the gauges all right so I've got field 2 all the way through to field 8 all right so if your character is two digits long you need the thing to be two eight digits long you need it to be eight and so on and so forth but if you're creating a project that's going to have constantly variables if in your in your project you can have it update to think speak at a certain number of digits it would make this job easier so what's going to happen now if it doesn't quite fit, get fit these digits here it's just going to fail and it's not going to update that one and um, that one won't work but the rest should but in this case it should all work fine so um, nothing much to show let me just show you how it works all right now I'll just mention that if you use uh, an antivirus software like a vast or anything like that what happens is it picks it up as a virus or malware or whatever it is it's thinking that because it's going to the internet for information that it could be something so it blocks it so I'd have to disable mine and I'll run it now so what's going to happen is the code runs once and then it's going to wait 30 seconds and run again and then populate all the dials now now I'm going to cut it out so it just automatically updates and then every 30 seconds after that it's going to go back and get the updated data if there is any there you go now if this helped you or you're more interested in more videos like this hit that like button leave a comment and consider subscribing. Alright, join me again.